the starting pitching market seems like one if you if you don't have to get into it you'd rather not because the prices are going to be exorbitant um and the secondary market like the the reliever market seems like one that you really don't have to give up a whole lot to to get something of value there yeah that's what you would think and, and i just look at trades for guys like brad ziggler and fernando rodney and if if that is the market for relief arms i think the blue jays should be more than capable of getting in there without giving up your Vladimir Guerrero Juniors, without giving up your Sean Reed Foley's, your top prospects you can stay in the system, and yet you can still bolster the team. So I think that that, that looks to me like a pretty safe fallback plan. Of course, if you're able to go out and get a starting pitcher, then that's uh, even better for a team that has Aaron Sanchez slated to move to the bullpen, that has you know, you're looking at Jay Happ taking a liner off the arm. You're looking at Marco Estrada just coming off the DL for back injuries. There's obviously no such thing as having too much starting pitching. And so for that reason, if they could go and add to, to their rotation, that would be great. But, it, you know, I think that the prices are going to be very high in that department. Yeah, it's crazy that uh, you, you hear reports of the A's asking for Anderson Espinosa for Rich Hill. Like a couple of months of Rich Hill, this is a guy who's the Red Sox top pitching prospect. And uh, eventually they, they, they sent out the door to get Drew Pomerantz, who's under team control through 2018. The A's wanted that guy for Rich Hill, who's been a viable starting pitcher for like a, a year and a couple of months. Oh, it's, it's crazy. And, and I think that that would seem to be somewhat of an accurate reflection because it's not as though Drew pa Pomerantz is, is David Price or no. Cole Hamels. I mean, yeah, he's, he's having a great year, and he's an all-star. And, yeah, it's a, it's a great story for a guy who at that time was on the Padres to, to represent his league in, in his hometown city. But, you know, I, I just don't think that you're going to find any kind of bargain on the starting pitching market if you're looking for someone with years of control. And I don't see the Blue Jays going out and giving up key pieces for someone who is a rental, like, like a Rich Hill. I just don't see them trading from their future to get a couple months of a guy who may or may not even be healthy. We talk about Sean Reed Foley and Connor Green and John Harris and, and how they've kind of uh, become the next crop of pitching prospects that could see the major league level for this Blue Jays team, but also could be trade pieces. But also, I don't know, maybe you see them at the major leagues earlier than you expected. Now, they're way down. I mean, Green's at least in double A, but those other guys are in A ball, and John Harris was just drafted like last year. I mean, is there any chance the Blue Jays really go cuckoo bananas and, and promote one of those guys in a relief role uh, to the major league level before this season's up? I really, I just don't see it because I, I think that as, as well as they've pitched, you know, Sean Reed Foley was just promoted to Dunedin maybe six or seven starts ago, and he's been tremendous, but that's yeah. just not, that's just such a huge leap and, and his development needs to happen as as a starting pitcher i think too with connor green he entered the season as someone who was a little bit off in the radar but at the same time he pitched in big league spring training games he got the invite to big league spring training and i think the people were looking at him as that kind of candidate but his year hasn't been overly dominant i'm not sure that you know he's necessarily their top pitching prospect anymore i think that a guy like Sean Reed Foley has probably passed him in the depth chart, and maybe a guy like John Harris, too. And again, Harris has been really good, their first rounder from last year. I, I think that he's definitely justified uh, that selection for the Blue Jays, but you know, I, I don't think any of those guys would necessarily be on the radar, and that's the, that's the thing with having made those trades last year, is you end up with a farm system that in, includes upside, that includes a lot of talent, but to me, and you know, this is Maybe the Blue Jays player development staff would view it differently. I doubt it. But to me, it just doesn't seem as though these, these players are ready to contribute right now.